Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today we're bringing you another CES news update, this time from AMD, following on from yesterday's coverage of Intel. In a surprise for us, AMD decided to pre-brief us with the important information from today's announcement a short while ahead of time. So as this video goes live, AMD's event should have just finished and I should be comfortably in bed given it's the middle of the night in Australia. So yeah, no going wild in the comments while I'm asleep. While not entirely the focus of today's announcements, the main star of the show is AMD's Ryzen Mobile 5000 lineup, bringing Zen 3 to laptop form factors for the first time. We're just ticking over to a year after the announcement of Ryzen Mobile 4000, so AMD are keeping up an impressive cadence for releasing new mobile parts and as we've seen over the past year, AMD now do have quite competitive hardware in this market. But before we get into it, here's a word from today's video sponsor. Experience ultimate performance and get pixel perfect detail with the new MSI Optics MAG274 QRF-QD monitor. Raise hell in game and soak in a blazing fast 165Hz refresh rate, stunningly quick rapid IPS panel with unrivaled color reproduction that topped our own gaming monitor charts here at Hardware Unboxed, all backed with NVIDIA G-Sync compatibility right out of the box. Offering 1440p resolution at 27 inches in size, MSI really has set a new standard for enthusiast gaming monitors. If a gaming monitor could be described as coming close to perfect, this would be it. So learn more about MSI's new Optics MAG274 QRF-QD monitor via the links below. Today's announcement is the full stack of Ryzen Mobile 5000 products, including H-series for performance notebooks and gaming, and U-series parts for ultra portables. There are a lot of components to work through, and we don't have all the details surrounding these parts, but we'll try our best to give a comprehensive preview. The first and most important thing to note is that the Ryzen Mobile 5000 series includes parts from two separate lines, Cezanne, which features Zen 3 CPU cores, and Lucene, which use Zen 2 CPU cores. While the majority of AMD's new SKUs are Cezanne and based on Zen 3, the remaining parts are basically just a refresh of Ryzen Mobile 4000 Renoir CPUs with a few small improvements along the way. You can see in this chart that the entirety of AMD's H series are Zen 3, while there are just two U series SKUs that use Zen 3, the Ryzen 7 5800U and Ryzen 5 5600U. The other three SKUs with an odd number in the second digit are Lucene. Let's start by taking a closer look at the U-series, beginning with the Ryzen 7 5800U. This is the 15 watt beast of the 5000 series lineup, bringing 8 Zen 3 CPU cores and 16 threads. This is the same core thread configuration as the Ryzen 7 4800U, but that's to be expected and is already class leading given Intel's equivalent parts top out at just 4 cores. But this doesn't mean we're getting the same performance, because there are 3 key improvements being made here. One is the increased IPC made available through AMD's Zen 3 architecture. While not explicitly listed in this presentation, AMD have previously talked about a 19% IPC gain for Zen 3 versus Zen 2, so we should be seeing an improvement of around that from the 5800U versus 4800U at the same frequency. But it's more than that because AMD are also slightly increasing clock speeds. The base clock rises from 1.8 to 1.9 GHz and the boost clock lifts from 4.2 to 4.4 GHz. In addition to this, AMD have doubled the L3 cache, moving from 8MB with Renoir to 16MB with Cezanne for all products. This table is a little confusing as it appears to list the L2 plus L3 cache amount for the Zen 3 parts, but just the L3 cache amount for Zen 2, but the basics are a doubling of L3. This is very important as the 8MB L3 was a little small with the Ryzen 4000 CPUs and did cause a bottleneck in some applications. Moving to 16MB instead is significant and gives Ryzen 5000 Zen 3 processors more cache than Intel's Tiger Lake U-series chips, although Tiger Lake still has an advantage in cache per core. These improvements flow down to the Ryzen 5 5600U, but in a 6-core 12-thread layout instead. Very similar clock speed gains, and it also benefits from the increase to cache. What we don't know for these parts, as AMD aren't talking design specific yet, is whether the 5800U and 5600U feature a unified slash single CCX for the CPU like on the desktop line, or whether it's still two CCXs, although we expect a unified design. AMD also hasn't detailed anything to do with the GPU design and layout. The expectation here is that it's the same vague architecture used in Ryzen Mobile 4000 with the same maximum of eight compute units, but possibly with 
with higher clock speeds. This is something we'll have to explore further when AMD details the design, but I wouldn't be expecting a significant upgrade in this department. As for the Lucien parts in the Ryzen 5000 new series, the chips built using Zen 2, AMD are essentially bringing the best of the Ryzen 4000 lineup into this new lineup. The Ryzen 7 5700U is very close to what the Ryzen 7 4800U used to be, meaning it has SMT enabled with the full 8 cores and 16 threads. Previously, the 4700U had just 8 cores and 8 threads. However, the 5700U isn't quite the same as the 4800U. The new 5700U actually has a slightly higher boost clock of 4.3 GHz versus 4.2 GHz previously. Again, similar for the Ryzen 5 5500U and Ryzen 3 5300U versus last gen parts. The 5500U is a Ryzen 5 4600U with a higher clock speed. Meanwhile, the 5300U is a Ryzen 3 4300U with SMT enabled and a higher boost clock of 3.8 GHz. While Lucien parts are using an older CPU architecture, the addition of SMT compared to their direct predecessors means we should be getting higher performance across the lineup, and that's what AMD are claiming in their performance slides. These are Cinebench R20 numbers, and you can see healthy gains for multi-threading performance across the board. Although these are AMD's own numbers, of course, so you should take them with the appropriate grains of salt being from the manufacturer themselves. The key takeaways here are a 14% gain for the 5800U over the 4800U, a 26% gain for the 5700U over 4700U, and 21% gain for the 5600U over 4600U in Cinebench R20 multi-thread. And as expected, the 5700U, which is very similar to the 4800U, ends up about 5% ahead in that comparison. While some numbers here like the 5800U versus 4800U don't quite meet the full IPC gains AMD has listed previously, and that could be due to a number of factors in such a power constrained product and with the monolithic layout as well, getting 15-20% to 20 gains from the same core count, same process node and very similar clock speeds is still quite decent in my opinion. As for single thread performance, this is where AMD are expecting to see the biggest improvement. Again, we have Cinebench R20 single thread numbers here, and the two Zen 3 parts are 16-18% to 18 faster than their Zen 2 predecessors. This should significantly close the gap between Ryzen and Intel's Tiger Lake, and I'd expect Zen 3 to comfortably beat a chip like the Core i7-1165G7 when both are configured to 15 watts. However, I have achieved higher numbers than what AMD is showing here from the 1165G7 at 28 watts, so that will be an interesting comparison to make when we get Ryzen Mobile 5000 in for testing, although possibly not favourable to Intel in the end due to Tiger Lake's higher power requirements to hit that performance, again we'll just have to test all of that. For what it's worth, AMD are also claiming the best productivity performance compared to both the Ryzen 7 4800U and Core i7-1165G7, although not fully sure on the power configurations used here, so again we will need to do some further testing. Now moving to the H series, and this is where AMD are really beefing up the lineup with more SKUs than ever. We have two base model H parts at 45 watts, the Ryzen 7 5800H and Ryzen 5 5600H. Then we have the addition of two new HX CPUs at the top, the Ryzen 9 5900HX and Ryzen 9 5980HX. All of these chips have a 35 watt HS counterpart as well, bringing the total SKU list to 8. All of these chips are Cezanne with Zen 3 CPU cores. There are a whopping 6 8 core models, each separated by clock speeds. The 5800H starts at a 3.2GHz base and 4.4GHz boost. This bumps up to 3.3GHz and 4.6GHz for the 5900X and 3.3-4.8GHz for the 5980HX. This is quite a hefty clock gain for the 5980HX versus AMD's previous best Ryzen Mobile 4000 CPU, the Ryzen 9 4900H, which topped out at 4.4GHz. The HS series chips are essentially better bins for the regular H or HX models, so they are listed with the same core configuration and peak clock speeds. However, to fit within the lower 35W TDP, base clocks are lower. At the lower end of the scale, the Ryzen 5 5600H offers 6 cores and 12 threads with clock speeds up to 4.2GHz. The improvements made here to Ryzen 5000 versus 4000 are exactly the same as we were talking about earlier with the U series. Zen 3 brings an IPC improvement and peak clock speeds anywhere from 200 to 400 MHz higher. Combined with double the L3 cache and the potential for a unified core design, these H series chips should be much more competent at mobile gaming, where previously AMD wasn't quite up to the level of Intel's 10th generation H series. They got close, 
but they weren't quite the same. The fact chips can now go up to 4.8 GHz is really handy in particular in the top of the line parts. AMD aren't providing as much performance data for the H series chips, the Ryzen 9 5980HS is being compared to the Core i9-10980HK and Core i7-11850G7, beating both for single and multi-thread performance. AMD are not showing a comparison to Ryzen Mobile 4000 here, but based on my Cinebench R20 numbers, this part would end up being about 6% faster in multi-thread and 22% faster in single thread versus the Ryzen 9 4900HS. We also get some data for the Ryzen 9 5900HX, showing better performance than the Core i9-10980HK. This part and other HX series processors have unleashed TDPs and support overclocking on select OEM systems, making them even more attractive to notebook makers that often love to increase power limits for H series chips well beyond the rated defaults. AMD concluded their presentation by showing continued expansion of Ryzen mobile availability, showing 150 systems coming with 5000 series chips. Certainly what we are hearing from OEMs is a much greater willingness to use Ryzen in laptops than any other prior generation, and that should be reflected in many more high-end laptops, particularly gaming laptops that will pair top-end NVIDIA RTX 30 GPUs with Ryzen 5000 CPUs, something laptop fans desperately wanted with the previous generation. What I'm not as confident in are AMD's claims of availability starting in February. We've heard concerns from some laptop OEMs that availability for Suzanne Silicon will be poor, and that may limit initial offerings. One company that we know of is only planning to release Ryzen 5000 systems paired with NVIDIA's top-end GPUs to begin with, and then work down the stack to more affordable systems as hopefully supply increases. Availability aside, there's a lot of promise here with AMD's Ryzen 5000 lineup, but also a lot of questions still remain. There is definitely the potential for these Zen 3 chips to do what Intel couldn't with Tiger Lake and offer the best single thread and best multi-thread performance in the one package. This could make Ryzen 5000 chips great buys for all sorts of laptop buyers from those that just need something portable for basic tasks, right up to productivity beasts that want to do both content creation and gaming on their laptop. However, it will have to pass the test of our benchmarking first, and the battle between AMD and Intel for that single thread crown looks very tight, despite AMD's gains with Zen 3. What we don't know is really anything about the GPU layout and performance, which is an area AMD may fall behind Intel for the first time in a while. Tiger Lake's iGPU is very competitive, so the exact same Vega GPU design may not cut it here. We do know that H-series Cezanne APUs do feature higher iGPU clock speeds, potentially over 2 GHz, so let's hope that translates to U-series as well. There are also important questions over the architecture still to be answered like the core layout, memory compatibility, PCIe configuration and so on. Hopefully we will be able to start benchmarking these mobile chips in the next few weeks, starting with H-series. Given the supply shortages, I've got no idea when devices will actually be available, but like with previous mobile launches, it may take us a couple of months to get everything on hand. AMD's other announcements at CES we got very limited information on. It seems AMD also launched the Ryzen 9 5900 and Ryzen 7 5800 as non-X 65 watt variants of existing Zen 3 CPUs for the OEM markets. It doesn't look like the anticipated Ryzen 5 5600 was launched, although it wouldn't make much sense given regular Zen 3 CPUs are still hard to come by. There was also discussion on Threadripper Pro and Epic Milan CPUs, although I have basically no information on what was shown other than Threadripper Pro CPUs are now available and Epic Milan is apparently quite fast. So that's basically it from AMD at CES 2021. I'm expecting to hear a lot more about new gaming laptops shortly, once NVIDIA's event has concluded where we'll be learning about RTX 30 series mobile GPUs. Again, NVIDIA has not done a pre-briefing for CES 2021 as far as I'm aware, so um, we will be talking about NVIDIA's announcements later on, potentially maybe 6-12 hours afterwards after I wake up and yeah, see what has been announced but we should be seeing quite a lot of mobile related news which will complete the sort of gaming laptop announcements that we usually see at CES 2021 and then the rest of the architecture stuff from this announcement Ryzen 5000 should be coming as well in a couple of weeks more around when we can start talking about performance numbers get to reviewing that sort of stuff so yeah some of the questions will be answered eventually anyway that's it for this yeah, look at CES 2021 news. Um, subscribe for more. You can support us with our Patreon float plane links. Uh, you can do that. Links via the description below. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.